Okay, uh, I can do this. It should be here. And now I feel more confident. Hey everyone, it's me. Sally, gal, Sal, gal, whatever you want to call me. This will be the second video in a series of talking about just mental health stuff. As always, I want to preface this by saying I'm not a medical professional. This is not medical advice. We're just talking about mental health, relating to each other, and finding some solidarity in a community to let us know that we are not alone in anything that we're going through. The last video in the series was actually the first one, and it was kind of like my introductory video about why I started my YouTube channel, why I wanted to talk about mental health, and it kind of resonated with quite a few people. This series will start out only for channel members, the only pals. And then once a new video is released, the one previously will be made public. So if you're seeing this first, the congratulations, you're a channel member. And I appreciate that more than you know. Uh, but last week we talked about why I started this YouTube channel, why I started the community that I did. And we talked a little bit about fitting in and why fitting in isn't necessarily the end all be all and why maybe sometimes you shouldn't fit in and fitting in isn't all it's cracked up to be. If you have to change who you are, shrink yourself down, take up less space, choose to like different things that maybe you normally wouldn't like, change your beliefs, anything you are in your core being, then fitting in isn't worth it. You should be yourself. Unless you're being a jerk, in which case, Maybe you need to rethink a couple things and then these series of videos probably aren't for you. I don't know. Whatever. Keep going. So last week I talked about fitting in. This week I want to talk about not feeling good enough. Having low self-esteem and I wanted to talk about it because I hear it a lot in this community. I hear it a lot in the content creation space. So I know that I'm not the only one that goes through that because I do go through that. I think everybody at some point experiences low self-esteem and maybe a sense of not feeling good enough for something or not being good enough for something. But I wanted to talk about why is that? Why is it that it is so easy for some of us, for a lot of us really, to believe that we're not good enough? I guarantee you there are content creators, streamers, celebrities, professional recording artists who struggle with that feeling as well loved and well known and successful as they are why is it even people in such a high demand feel that way I mean and we feel that way as you know well I feel that way feeling like a little pleb in the you know a pebble in this giant rock garden of content creation and live streaming, which is just something I've thrown myself into. But why is that? And, and that's what I wanna talk about. I wanna talk about not feeling good enough or not feeling like we are not good enough and how that impacts our self-esteem and how that even ties into and overlaps with imposter syndrome. And it's such a common feeling and so insidious. In fact, I've made a, a short video about my personal experience with imposter syndrome. Feel free to go back and watch it. And let me know what you think. And if you are somebody who is in like a creative arts kind of a thing, whether it's writing or acting or singing, performing of some kind or making things, making art, drawing, coloring, watercolor, painting, whatever that may be. Do you go through that? Do you experience that feeling of not being good enough? I want to share a personal experience, okay? And I don't want this to seem... I don't know, pitiful or anything. It, I don't know. See, I even wonder, am I good enough to talk about this? A couple of years ago, I got a Twitter DM from the last person on earth I would have ever thought. And the Twitter DM was very simple. It wasn't anything rude or what you would figure a DM to be, you know? It was just literally, hey, do you want to play games together sometime? I remember when I got that message, I had woken up and I had to do not a double, but a triple take at my phone to make sure that I was seeing things correctly because at that time I had just started to live stream and it was still trying to find my footing between creating content, like recorded content and live streaming. And this person DM'd me and I thought at first it was a spam, like somebody impersonating their account. And once I realized it was from a verified account and it was from this person legitimately, I had to put my phone down 
And my first thought was, They made a mistake. I don't think they meant to send me a message. Because that's just the way I'm programmed. And I've been actually looking up the reason why a lot of people have a low self-esteem or the reason why a lot of people don't feel good enough or feel like they're not enough for something. And I knew that those negative thoughts and that negative reaction was a well, was a reaction in and of itself of things that had happened to me, not only in my childhood, but all throughout my life, childhood through adulthood, and still to this day sometimes. And I had to, I had to stop myself from going back and rereading for like a fifth time. And it wasn't out of like a sense of, oh my gosh, I can't believe that they sent me a DM. It wasn't like excitement, like you would normally have a reaction. Anybody who is contacted by somebody that they admire or look up to in any capacity would generally be excited. They would feel happy. Oh my gosh. Wow. This person wants to play games with me. Wow. That's amazing. My first thought was, I think, I think he's got the wrong person. And then I got sad because I thought, oh man, it was a mistake, you know. But a little while later, I I responded. And I don't even remember what I responded with. But I was like, yeah, that'd be great. And it turned out to be one of the most rewarding and fun experiences. Well, it turned into many fun experiences. But I, I look back on that and I remember... The, that first interaction and I remember that feeling of not being good enough. I mean, I've actually expressed this a few times to some close friends uh, in regards to playing games with this person. This is somebody that I have very much respect for. This is somebody that I look up to, which is kind of weird because I'm older than he is. So it's kind of funny to me that way. A lot of admiration for what he does and for somebody to me of that caliber to reach out to me was like, holy crap, uh, wow, wait till he plays games with me and finds out I'm actually just a really boring person. Turns out that's not the case. Well, I might as well say it's Bob, uh, my, my skirm, who reached out to me and, and Bob, if you ever see this, that was such a cool thing for you to do. And I will forever be grateful for being able to play games with you. I don't know a lot of people that can say that. You know, if you ever come across this, thank you so much for including me because that to this day makes me feel really good but going back to the initial reaction I had you know and and even like during those first few times we played games together I was so concerned about being good enough and that had such a negative impact on on me and I wish that my brain would just accept the fact that I am not as terrible as I think I am and that I am good enough because when you go into a situation, whether it's playing games with somebody you admire or somebody you look up to um, or meeting new friends or, I don't know, going to a job or something and feeling like you don't deserve it, that really impacts the situation in a negative way and... I don't know why we do that. Why do we do that? Why do we feel not good enough? Why do I feel not good enough? Why is it so easy for us to believe that we're not good enough for something? And again, that laps into imposter syndrome. And if you're not familiar with imposter syndrome, it is the thought process of constantly feeling like people are going to find out you're not really who you say you are, you're not really doing the things that you are doing, you are not really the person that you say you are, even though you are in every capacity. And it it can be a self-sabotaging behavior. It can be a self-sabotaging thought process. And that is, it's so sad to me that there are so many of us who struggle with that. And, and specifically in the content creation and streaming sphere, there are so many large creators, large successful creators, large successful streamers who actively talk about experiencing these things. Low self-esteem, not feeling good enough, imposter syndrome. And when it comes to that, I just, why is that? I don't have an answer for that. I mean, psychology suggests childhood traumas, 
environmental factors, overbearing parents who sort of feed into that negative voice that we develop as children. It grows with us. That little voice that's always saying, oh, are you sure you can do that? That's that's what psychology says. All those things. Even as adults, you can develop a negative self voice, a voice that is constantly playing, constantly questioning, questioning everything you do. I just, I don't know why it's so insidious. Why is it so prevalent? I mean, I guess as content creators, we are always putting our, well, maybe not always putting our best self out there. Uh, I know I don't always put my best self out there. Some of my content is pretty bad. But as content creators, we are, we are putting effort into ourselves, right? We have to sell ourselves. That's really what we're doing. We have to convince people to subscribe to our channels, to watch our live streams, because we want to grow communities, because we want to be the biggest and best or whatever the goal may be. It, I guess it doesn't surprise me that at some point the views go down, the subscriber count goes down, the tips go down, and maybe that causes people to have that sort of, wow, am I not good enough anymore? Am I really not good enough? But then you have people who from the jump, i.e. me, who feel that way from the get-go. I, I just, I don't know. When I started my YouTube channel, I didn't feel good enough. I, I kept hearing people talk about how everybody's first video is going to be terrible. You know, and I thought, my, my first few videos are probably going to be really terrible. And they were. And that's okay. I just don't know. I don't want to feel that way anymore. And I don't think it's fair that other people who are incredibly talented and brave and courageous and creative constantly question whether they're good enough or have that low self-esteem. What do you think? I'd love to hear your thoughts on why that mentality, leading into imposter syndrome even, why that is so prevalent. Because I personally have never interacted with somebody outside of like the occasional internet troll who has told me I'm not good enough to do something. I just automatically assume that I'm not good enough. And that's really bad. I don't want to assume that anymore. I'd like to think that I'm at a point, point where I may be a little good at something. I'm pretty good at talking about some stuff. I'm pretty good at making people laugh when they watch my Sims set themselves on fire. I'm good at inspiring people when they're feeling like they are worried about starting a YouTube channel. I am good at talking about parenting things and helping people, you know, find solidarity in that because being a parent is hard and being a parent who makes content and streams is even harder. That shit is hard. And it drives me nuts that I still think I'm not good enough, that I still feel like I'm not doing enough or I'm not enough or people are gonna find out I'm not really as great as I think I am or they think I am. I always say I wish I was as cool as my kids think I am. That's like the only thing that is super true. My kids think I know everybody on YouTube and I don't know why that's, I don't know, kids are weird. <laughs> but going back to what I was saying, I have all of these cool things that I've done. I've played games with Bob, I've met, you know, some really amazing people and I've raised money for charity, which is probably the most important thing I've done. And I've cultivated a community of people who not only support me, but they support each other as well. And there are still so many times when I record a video or go live and the first thought is, I suck at this. And then I get to feeling bad and then it becomes this vicious cycle. And I'd like to stop that. I, I mean, I'm in therapy and I'm working on that. All of it, everything is intertwined in all of us. Our childhood experiences, our adult experiences, our experiences as, as teenagers, everything shapes us and it's constantly changing and our environments are constantly changing. And we live in a very hostile society right now, specifically if you are not a part of a certain demographic of people, which I am not, it's hard. So everything kind of feeds into each other and I just wanna know why is that? And if you're one of those people who is struggling with not feeling good enough or struggling with imposter syndrome or struggling with low self-esteem, the boat is full. We are all in this together. But I understand and I accept the fact and appreciate the fact that we are not all in the same boat. Some of us are in a dinghy. Some of us are in a yacht. Some of us are on the damn cruise ship. But I understand everybody's journey is different. Everybody's storm feels different, you know? But why do we feel not good enough? Why do we struggle with that? I don't know. I mean, I know, again, I know what psychology says. 
But everything plays together. Poor self-esteem, imposter syndrome, not feeling good enough. Depression plays into that. Anxiety plays into that. This is why it's so important for us to take care of our mental health. And that's where it all comes back to. Investing in ourselves. I used to be much worse two years ago. Before I started therapy. I had so many unprocessed things, so much unresolved trauma and experiences and reactions from that. And I've learned a lot about myself. I've learned a lot about how I, how I am, how I deal with things. And that has helped me to make sense of a lot of what's happened and a lot of what's going on and a lot of the things that go through my head. I probably wouldn't have had the courage two years ago to make a video like this. I would have been afraid that people would have been judging me. They wouldn't have cared. You know, and as a YouTuber, as somebody who puts their life sometimes, occasionally through vlogs on YouTube, one of the things I think about often, and, and I'm sure this is something other YouTubers, bigger YouTubers can relate to, is nobody's going to care. And you often hear big YouTubers say, well, I don't care if nobody does this. I don't care if nobody watches my video. They care. They do care. Because they want you to watch their stuff or they wouldn't be putting it online. They can be as nonchalant as they want, but the whole point of having a community is to share things with people. I don't know how that ties into it, but that's where my brain went real quick. If you needed a sign that you are good enough to do that thing, to try that thing, to talk to that person, to even get out of bed, to get yourself dressed, to shower, because executive function can be so damn hard to deal with depression can make things even harder if you needed a sign that you are good enough this is your sign you are good enough you really are and if you are able to and it's accessible for you i hope you invest in yourself invest in your mental health because low self-esteem not feeling we're like we're good enough and this imposter syndrome and the depression and anxiety and all these things that kind of go together, they all kind of overlap. That can, that can wear on somebody. And not just, not just mentally and emotionally, but physically. It can make you feel so heavy inside, make your, your jaw tense and your shoulders tense up. If you are going through that right now, I'm sorry. It's really hard. I hope that you can find the tools and resources you need to be able to learn that you are good enough to at least try something just once to go out and do the thing that you've been wanting to do I hope you find the belief in yourself that you can make that thing or be that thing or try to be that thing and I hope that if somebody reaches out to you to play games with you or somebody reaches out to you to want to be friends, I hope that your first thought is, that's really cool, rather than, I think they have the wrong person. <laughs> Don't be like me. That's what I got for today. Sometimes we feel like we're not good enough. Sometimes our brains, sometimes our past experiences or current experiences convince us that we are not good enough. And it's a about damn time that we start believing we are. My name is Gal Sal or Sally, and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye!